So I would like to thank you again for allowing us to hear about you, learn about you, and ask you questions. Uh, the first question that I have comes from several students, actually, and a lot of them wanted to know, I want to be an artist when I grow up, but I don't know where to start. Is there any tips or advice you can give me on how to get noticed and where to begin? <laughs> oh, um, that's quite a difficult question. Um, and probably slightly back to front in the sense that you, when you first start to paint, your first worry shouldn't be about trying to get noticed. That makes it sound as if you're more interested in being famous than getting good at painting. I have to admit that I'm not the uh, probably the typical artist in the sense that I haven't done it as a full-time job all my life. I started painting when I was about 11, sitting outside, um, but um, I turned out to be good at other things, or it turned out that I was good at other things. And in fact, I went to university and um, read pure mathematics. Um, but I'd always painted alongside uh, teach. I, mean, I was a college lecturer in mathematics um, until uh, I retired from what I call the day job when I was 60. But I, I kept painting all of the time. So I had this parallel career, which actually in the end uh, took off. Now, in the college I worked at, there was a big art department and a lot of the uh, art lecturers there full time were quite jealous that I was able to paint pictures and more or less do as I liked. Whereas they taught art and were quite exhausted by it and had no free time to actually do any of their own painting. Um, so they were sort of quite conflicted. You'd be surprised how many artists actually have a proper job, if I can call it that, full time or part time and paint. I think nowadays the thing to do is to keep painting and exhibit and show your paintings and get noticed rather than attract, attract attention through your work rather than any, anything else. Painting is about what it looks like and therefore it should attract people from what you've done. Um, in fact, I was quoting my wife the other day saying that um, uh, some paintings you can look at for a week and forget. Try and be the sort of artist who paints a picture and people just glance at it and it stays with them forever. Um, don't expect overnight success. You know, this isn't um, a celebrity type sort of uh, entertainment. You know, it's a proper craft that you need to learn. I think there's two sorts of artists. There's those that keep experimenting. And if you're young, there's a tendency to want to do that, to find yourself. And there's those that have a vision. And all they really do is pursue that vision. Um, I have to say I was one of those. Very early on, I liked sort of clean, fresh, lively looking watercolours. And essentially my whole life has been, been about trying to paint and close the gap between the vision I have of the painting I would like to paint and its execution. You'll never close the gap completely, but eventually it will get a bit, a bit narrower. That is awesome advice. I love that. Thank you. You actually answered um, two more questions they had, which was right. uh, if you had another job, what would it be? And that's awesome. Uh, something that is not on there, but I would like to point out, and I tell my kids this all the time, math is so closely, closely related to art in so many ways, and they just, it, it blows their mind whenever I tell them that. Would you agree with that, or do you disagree? Well, I, I think I, I do know quite a lot of artists who have actually got a mathematical background, and of course people don't um, they feel uncomfortable when there's people who can do, who appear to be good at more than one thing. It's not it's not very seemly. To, <laughs> um, mathematics is actually often linked to music, but I'm not musical at all. Um, the painting, I have to say, came first. Um, I was 
and it, I was quite a late developer and, and it did, I didn't sort of develop an interest and have an obvious ability in mathematics until I was sort of 13, 14, 15. Um, and I was interested in it, but it's a sort of a young man's game as well. I don't think it actually matters what you do. I mean, I, I know artists that have been scientists. I know one who was a, an equestrian horse stud manager and of some big stables. Um, I know artists that have been teachers all their lives and have actually managed to maintain a um, production of paintings. But I also know some art teachers that hardly know one end of a paintbrush from another and, um, and never pick up a paintbrush when they're retired. They've had enough of it. You know, they've almost had their creativity sucked out of them. Um, so I think the advice, if you're really dedicated to painting, is to have a job that obviously you like doing, um, but um, isn't so tiring that it will wear you out and you've got no energy left to do any painting. You need a little bit of sort of spare creativity um, and time on your own. I think that's the important thing, um, rather than um, if, if there's something else that you're really good at and you like doing, then, then go for that. I mean, I know some artists who are professional musicians, you know, uh, which I think is a very nice sort of combination. Um, everybody's different. Um, so uh, be yourself. All the other places are taken, as Oscar Wilde said. <laughs> that is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, next, several of my students wanted to know, what is your favorite artwork, if you have one, or do you have a favorite artist? I, I, I haven't got a favorite artist, but I've got a lot of favorite pictures from a lot of different artists. And I think you enjoy artists for different reasons. I mean, there's a lot of artists I like, and I, could, I can't paint like them. Um, and in fact, I often think we admire most um, other artists whose work is quite different from our own. Um, the, I think if the, there's a self-portrait of Rembrandt with two big circles in the background, I think that's uh, uh, an important and timeless universal painting. Um, but there are also some watercolorists, quite a lot of Americans actually, I mean, that, that I've sort of admired. Well, there's the Anglo-American, of course, Sir John Singer Sargent, Winslow Homer, who I'm sure everyone will have heard of because I'm quite keen on marine art. Um, there's another one who's less well known called John Wharf, um, Andrew Wyeth, of course. Um, uh, there's Charles Reed, who's recently died, who was a contemporary artist. There's several English artists, Edward Wesson, um, uh, John Yardley, um, Anders Zorn, Soroya from, um, from Spain, um, Mancini from Italy. Uh, I mean, there's a whole list. And in fact, very often, um, particularly nowadays in the internet, I might come across a painting that I really like. And I look it up and I look the artist up and I discover actually that's the only one I do like or I don't like the others. <laughs> um, so it's, um, there are very few artists who, um, whose work uh, I like all, you know, all of the work. The, the artists I really like, and there's one in this country called Morgan who recently died, is the artists that take me by surprise. That every time I see their pictures, um, I, the, the, the next picture they do um, is completely different from previous ones. Um, there's, um, there's some artists who you think you see two or three of their works and, oh, I really like those. And then you see more of them and you discover they're all very similar. Um, so, um, but uh, the ones that continually um, are searching and entertaining themselves and challenging themselves um, and take me by surprise. They're the ones I get the most enjoyment from. Uh, next, why have you chosen watercolor over other media? Well, I do, I do paint in oil and I do a little bit of pen and wash. I think the medium you paint in um, is very much geared to your temperament, actually. In fact, I, I often say to students who are, uh, meet on painting courses, the key to, to painting is to find a sort of style. I know that's a bit simplistic um, uh, that you, you'd like, and then pursue that style 
but find a way of painting in that style that is a painting process that you enjoy carrying out. Um, so it's no good um, liking broad brushwork if you're sort of fiddly and detailed by nature. On the other hand, um, don't go against your temperament. Um, find a style that you like, find a way of painting in that style that is a painting process that you enjoy, um, that suits your temperament and personality and fits into your lifestyle and the time you have available um, and the energy you have available to, to do it. Um, watercolor suits me and there's a certain sort of fresh liveliness um, and it's I think it's very difficult to reproduce the freshness of a watercolor in any other medium. In fact I meet a lot of people that paint in oil and acrylic and other mediums and the only reason they give is because they can correct their mistakes whereas secretly they still prefer watercolor but they maintain it's too difficult. I mean I think that's a bit of a myth put about by people like me who try and make it more difficult than it really is. <laughs> but no, it's it's not, um, it's not, it's no more difficult than any other medium. It's got its it's got its own individual characteristics, as have all mediums actually. Hey, that actually answered another question. So that's awesome. Thank you. The other question was does mood affect your artwork? And yes, it does, because like you just said, it goes through whatever you're feeling into the painting. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a mood. It's just the general sort of um, your general attitude. I mean, I often think what goes through the brain goes down the arm and out through the brush. Um, and watercolor particularly is, is very sensitive to that. It's every little uncertainty, lack of confidence, anxiety um, actually shows if you can read watercolor, and it, well, and I think even even um, the lay people can, can see that you know, where all the artists was a bit nervous, they were frightened of making a mistake. Um, do it confidently, um, and uh, it, it'll eventually and um, will show. Okay, next. Uh, this is actually an interesting one. How long do you typically spend on an artwork and how many artworks do you complete on a monthly or a yearly basis? Oh, crikey. <laughs> um, well, I don't, um, I don't keep, let me first of all say I don't keep count because I'm an artist, I'm not a manufacturer. Um, so, you know, I'm not running a production line. Um, uh, paint, painting is essentially a way of life. Um, and I paint, I won't say I paint every day, but I paint regularly. And if I've had a, had a while not painting, then I don't feel too good and I'm anxious to get back at it. Um, well, the old answer that, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the artist's name, who, when he was asked, as an old artist, when he was asked um, how long it took him to paint, uh, a picture he said, um, uh, two hours and 60 years. Um, so, now, I, I, most of the, the that's the nice thing about watercolors. Watercolors are normally produced quite quickly, sort of about an hour and a half to two hours. In fact, John Singer Sargent said you need, need two people to paint a watercolor, one to paint it and one to stand by with a club and hit him on the head um, when he's finished it and to stop him overworking it. Um, the um, watercolors are often at their best about 10 minutes before the artist has put the brush down. I suppose um, I paint um, at least, I reckon, probably 150 pictures a, a year. But it might, that's, I mean, I've never counted. Um, but bear in mind with watercolor, it's a high risk business. So not, not everyone is going to be successful. I mean, it actually might be more. I mean, there are some days that go by and I might make paint two or three. But then there might be three days and I've just painted one. Um, but on average, um, I would imagine over the year, it's about that number. For me, that's that's a lot of paintings. I'm I'm lucky to be able to get people, one a week. <laughs> well, a lot of people say, "How do you get how do you get good with watercolor? Or how did you learn?" And I, and I the answer I give is, I've read a lot of books. Um, um, I've seen been lucky enough to see some good painters paint. I've been to a lot of exhibitions, but the main thing is, I've covered acres of paper. Um, and I've liked doing it. It's never been a practice. 
It's, it's been a pleasure. That's the important thing. I've never practiced painting. I've just got on and painted pictures. And if they've been successful, uh, that's been an added bonus. But they're successful if I've enjoyed the actual uh, process and had a nice time while I'm doing it. And funny enough, the paradox is the less you care about the end result, the better the end result turns out to be. That is so true. Next, what struggles, if there were any, did you have whenever you first were becoming an artist? Oh, well, I think, I think struggling is, is a, a little bit of a loaded phrase to use, actually, because learning to paint or just paint um, is a process of just exp experience, um, which you have when you're doing anything, actually. Now, there will be, be times when I've sort of struggled, for want of a better word, to achieve various effects. But it's going back to what I said earlier on about having a vision of how I want the painting to look and then trying to close that gap between the vision and its execution. Now, that's going to be a struggle, but if you close the gap completely or you think you have, then you've just turned up, then you're just a manufacturer producing paintings. There's always something to sort of improve on. Um, if, you do, if you don't like the three Ds, despair, despondency and depression, don't take up watercolour painting because you're going to, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be a lot of paintings that don't turn out the way you would like them. Um, but other people may like them. Only you, as an individual, know the difference between how you wanted it to turn out and how it's actually turned out. Other people are completely unaware of that difference and they will just accept, accept it as it is. So keep quiet about it. Don't tell them, oh, it's not as I wanted it to be. Uh, they will see things in it um, that you haven't seen. And you, you can't be responsible for their knowledge and history and background and experience and what they like. It needs two people to finish off a painting. It needs the artist and the viewer. Uh, and the viewer will add things to it that you perhaps didn't, um, you weren't aware of. But when they say it, just take the credit for it. Have you uh, ever heard of the artist Bob Ross? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, uh, whenever I talk to people overseas, they haven't heard of him, but he was really big in America. One of his favorite things that he always said on TV was, if you ever get to the point where you think you can't improve, put down your brush because you're done as an artist. Hmm. Yes, that's good advice. And I, I always love that. I thought that was great advice. And what you said, mm. it, it kind of said virtually the same thing. That was awesome. Well, even, even the great John Singer Sargent, who was probably one of the most hardworking, talented artists has ever been, was asked once if, um, if uh, a friend of his wanted to buy one of his watercolors. Uh, and, and he said, I want to keep that because... Um, it just reminds me that I can do it sometimes um, and I just need that little bit of encouragement. He didn't put it quite like that. He actually said something to the effect, it just reminds me that I'm, uh, I'm not a duffer all the time. You know, he'd got a success and he just needed that little bit of reassurance um, that um, on a good day he could get a successful watercolour even when other days they weren't. Now, if John Singer Sargent was like that, yeah. we shouldn't be um, too embarrassed that we're like it as well. The next question, let's see here. Um, the, oh, this is actually a good one. How do you know what details to add or remove when you're painting an artwork from real life? Ah, now that, that is a tricky one. <laughs> well, I mean, the short answer is experience. Uh, the second answer is... Uh, or a fuller, fuller answer is each person, I think, um, notices different things. Um, and so when you're painting, what you should be doing is painting what you have noticed to show others what you've seen. Um, you, uh, it's not what you look at, it's what you see that's the important thing. And we'll all see different things because we've all come from different backgrounds and, and different levels of experience. 
I probably now take on more um, challenging or more detailed views, subjects outside than I used to years ago. So it, it varies. But even then, I, uh, um, I um, eliminate a lot of detail. Um, it's, I think it's, tr it's a lot of it is simply trial and error, frankly, that over the years you add things to a painting and then you think actually that didn't really add to the actual painting. Um, and particularly with watercolour, it's a lot easier to keep adding and adding. Um, they're quite difficult to subtract. So think carefully, is this, if I paint it, is it going to add to the strength of the painting or is it going to weaken the message? Um, I think it's important to look at a subject, um, and this will come with experience, and translate it, convert it into a watercolour image. So actually what you're doing is painting the image you have in your mind of the subject. And you're not busy taking, taking, taking all the time. Some of it, see the whole of the visual menu and discard some of it. Um, take what you want. Um, that will uh, be um, faithful to the subject um, and eliminate anything um, that you don't feel adds to the, the image. Um, and the power of the watercolor. Four questions left. This one was a big one with my students. How has COVID-19 affected your career or business in the past two years that it's been going on? Well, actually it didn't worry me because I found it's the longest period I've had without any sort of teaching of painting. Um, so I found it actually a very, uh, a nice period when you could sort of consolidate and find yourself, frankly, um, without um, sort of having to teach others painting. Um, so it's the longest period I've had when I could just get on with my own painting um, uh, and no other distractions. And I probably found I was more introspective, happier on my um, uh, working on my own than I thought I was. I mean. Uh, um, we've got a nice home. I mean, I, <laughs> I was living with my wife, so you know, we, we were quite happy together. So that's, you know, um, I think it's, it varies to, to some extent how social people are. If you're going to be a painter, you've got to um, accept and like being on your own um, some of the time. Um, now, a lot of artists actually found that with the internet particularly, they're, they're, um, they thrived in terms of sales. They started selling direct to the customers and missing out. Um, the middlemen and the galleries that take huge proportion of the, uh, the value of the painting uh, as commission. Um, and in fact, some of them um, uh, have become sort of um, quite independent of galleries. You know, they've, uh, they're selling direct to art lovers. Um, how that that would have been different in the um, if there hadn't been the internet and the world wide web, I have to say. Um, and of course, one one of the things I did um, is um, because I wasn't doing any classes, I did make, start making these videos, um, which are just made in my studio. My wife does some of the filming. Uh, our son is very good with computers, and he does the editing. Um, and they have been that. They've been seen by um, lots of people. In fact, one of them has been watched by over half a million people. And I get um, even now sort of um, seven or eight emails every day from people asking various questions or sort of com com complimenting me. Um, and, you know, and I respond to them because if people have taken the trouble to show interest and uh, contact me, then I think it's, it's only natural that... <laughs> Excuse me, no, you're right. I should have respond back. Next question. Uh, where does your inspiration come from? Um, well, I, I think that's, I think inspiration's overrated. Um, I don't, I don't actually never quite understood the, the, the phrase inspiration. I think a lot of artists um, talk this up, but I do know some sort of artists, they just get on with the painting, frankly. They see a subject um, and um, 
you think, oh, yes, I'd like to paint that. Uh, and it might be just the cast of a shadow or it might be um, a particular shape. It may be that they're interested in aeroplanes or, or um, trees. Um, there isn't a single right answer to that. If you wait for inspiration, you, you're not going to paint very regularly. Um, just get on. The thing is, just get on with the painting and um, do it regularly. And if you're, uh, you should find that the more you paint, frankly, the more subjects you see. If if I that have got potential, don't worry about running out of subjects. It's the artists that paint the most who who find the most to paint, even just within their vicinity, because they're using their eyes. They're seeing more. Um, it's, it's about looking and seeing. And treat painting like learning to play the piano. You know, you've got to do it regularly. Um, it's no good doing it regularly once, one week every year. That's, that might be regular, but it's not often enough. Uh, oh, we're down to the last three. I think you've kind of answered this one already, but it's still a good question, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Do you consider your job as an artist to be a job or a hobby that you get paid for? Um, well, I, if I, I sell paintings to paint, I don't paint to sell. Um, I, it, I think it's a, it's a lifestyle, and uh, a friend of mine who's a portrait painter, um, uh, he um, he excuses it. Um, uh, if somebody says, well, I understand you're an artist, he just says, yeah, sorry, I can't help it. Um, uh, and I think that's, that, that is very true, actually, of genuine artists. They can no more stop painting than a dog can stop scratching for fleas. You know, it's, it's just natural. So I, I don't know that I particularly view it in any any way. I, you know, it's, it's just something I do, like um, uh, like I keep breathing and um, having meals. You know, it's it's just a natural thing. Um, it's uh, it's not forced in any way. Um, I so I um, I don't particularly sort of view myself as a professional artist. I suppose. I, I, I would view it as I, I found something I like doing and, um, uh, and I found people that would give me a little money to do it. I think that's the key. Um, and because, I, uh, as I said earlier, I had a proper job, a day job, but when I, I gave that up when I was 60, um, but the painting had, had gradually taken over. So in the last sort of decade of, of proper working, I was almost doing two jobs. Um, so uh, that um, appeared to be doing two jobs, I suppose, but it didn't didn't feel like that because one I wanted to do both of them, um, and then the one gave gave um, gave way to the other one. When you mess up on an artwork, do you restart or do you work through it? And to add to that, have you ever restarted after you have already finished? <laughs> um, I remember having a student once who said when they were at school doing art, the teacher said to them, it doesn't matter how bad it is, always finish it. I think it's good advice with watercolour because um, all paintings have a life of their own and they do go through a sort of a dead discouraging period which you've got to get through I, I try and avoid that by adopting a sort of a, a more positive technique and attitude to it um, but if if you start being discouraged and sort of giving up on it it will show um, and um, so I, in fact if it doesn't look as if it's going to be successful that's the time um, when you can say, well, let's just go for it. Then. Let's take a few risks and perhaps the painting will um, be successful. Um, one of the things I have noticed with, with the experience is I have fewer failures than, than I used to have. Um, because I've, 
I've just learned when they're going to go go wrong. Um, um, you, it's a lot of it. A lot of um, uh, I know what can go wrong. In fact, when I was um, when I teach, one, uh, some of the students say to me, "You you don't half say don't a lot, Andrew." And essentially, what I'm saying is, I'm I'm giving them early warnings. This is where it could go wrong. This is going to be tricky. I mean, I, I think it's probably better to teach in a positive way and say, "Do this," rather than "Don't do that," because that's not very helpful. But uh, it's and with watercolor, there are some things, like many things in life, where you've got to go through the painful experience of it going wrong to learn from it. You can't learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, you, you you just got to feel for it. Um, I mean, and even now, you know, if you're painting outside, the first thing I do is um, is often do a small area of the picture, um, simply because I don't know on that particular day with the wind and the humidity and the temperature and how I feel um, and the dampness in the air, how the paint, um, how the paper is going to take the paint off the brush. So you've got to get into that. It's different every time before you then start with the bigger areas. Um, I think when you start a painting, start with something that's easy and as simple, and um, you can be sure of getting right and build from that. Don't do the, the tricky things first. Um, start with what is clear so that you can build from a, a solid foundation of having something correct on your piece of paper. Um, but things do go wrong. Um, and just think of it as, um, well, why wrong? Again, I mean, different from the way I wanted it to turn out. Um, other people may say, well, I like that, um, but, but it's not quite what I wanted. Um, so there, there is, there can obviously be technical uh, mistakes. You know, the drawing can be wrong. The, um, uh, the, the tones can be wrong. Um, but in general, when I when we when I use the word wrong, I'm really saying the painting hasn't turned out as the way um, the artist would have liked. Um, keep it to yourself and let others do the judging. The last question we have, and I save this one for last because this is is kind of a heavy question, but it's also one that I think you've answered. Why do you make art? <laughs> Well, of course, I come back to that answer. Well, I can't help it. Um, the uh, that that um, the monk uh, Thomas Merton, who lived in a, a monastery in Kentucky, I think he said one of the most profound things I've ever heard about painting. He said, "Well, he, he was referring to art in general." He said, "Art is where you find yourself and lose yourself at the same time," uh, and I think that's very true, actually. Um, if if you can't help doing it, um, then you're an artist. Although, again, to give another little anecdote, a friend of mine, when he's painting outside, if people come up to him and says, are you an artist? He says, no, I'm a painter. Come back in 10 years and I might be an artist. So concentrate on the craft painting bit and eventually the art will come out. Well, Andrew, that is awesome advice thank you so much for allowing me to talk with you and for answering our questions uh that's all the questions that i have is there any questions that you might have for me no no well, well thank well thank you very much for I inviting me and uh, i hope um, your class um, uh, are entertained and are interested <laughs> and encouraged but just to remind them that all us so-called artists are just normal human beings who are lucky enough to have something that we like doing and just get on and do it. And that's the important thing. It's part of who we are. Well, thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure for me. I hope that I haven't taken up too much of your time. No, no, that's no, fine. Well, thanks very much for asking me then. And um, take care. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.